gonna frame off my shoulder. He's got the knee shield. Now he's gonna sit up, fire off that deep underhook. We punch the arm down. I can go cross face. I can work on his neck. And I'm just gonna drop my hip and make sure his knee points away from me. Switch my base, settle into the top position. Top half guard, but I'll take this. And you notice from here, the underhook has no power. It's simply because I'm controlling the leg. Okay, one more time. You guys see how Steve was positioned? He's on his side. A lot of times we have the knee shield. Now he comes up on his elbow, gets that deep underhook. Put, punch the hand down on the knee, right here. Now he has no more rotation. And then it's just up to you. I can go forward or I can start going after his neck. Either way. The goal right now is not to pass the guard. The goal right now is to kill the underhook. Passes the second half. Any questions? We're good? Yes, sir. Okay, let's go. One, two, three. The body positioning leads to kimura, to armbar, triangle, and in this case, guillotine. When you're in, in this position here, and especially if you have head control, like you can, you can cup the chin. That's a great way to just, if you cup the chin and you get the blade of your thumb under their neck, under their chin, it's against the neck, I've already created that gap between their, their chin and their, their chest with my hand. So there's no way he can tuck his chin. But the key here is when you lock, you have to move your hips, but you don't wanna fall back. If I fall back, it's almost like a half guard top. Even if I hold Steve-O's leg, you can see the positioning is way off. His hips are out to the side. He needs to be directly in line with me. So he sits up, I block, I grab the neck. Now all I'm doing is I'm moving towards his head, this way. Now I have a shield, my butterfly hooks. His arm is in, that's okay. I grab the wrist, I pull up on the chin. And you don't have to stretch the legs. I just wanna make sure when I'm doing this, his hips don't come forward. So it's kind of like a block. See, and we don't arch, we stay in the pocket tight. The most important thing is you see how my, my body's in direct alignment with him. This way, sometimes, some of you, when you fall back, you'll end up like this. It's fine too. It's just my shin is across his hip line, but we have to have the leg over the back to keep his hips from coming up to try to jump out. So whether you're like this or like this, you have to have a buffer that keeps his weight from coming on top of you. But the direction your body's going is always over the head. When you, let's put it this way, from a defensive standpoint, for Steve-O to attack properly, he gets in here. If this gets deeper and deeper, the only way out I have is to go forward towards his head. That's to his advantage. We're doing the exact same thing. The only difference is I'm the one in control now. Now I'm moving towards his head, but I'm sitting and creating a buffer. It can be this way, or it can be this way. But you see the positioning of our bodies. You're basically sitting to guard, but you have to move enough to create space for your knee to come in or your hooks to block. Okay. And it's, it's kind of, um, we're working from the same scenario. The only difference now is we're gonna be on our hip. We're gonna be like this, sorry, mm -hmm. like this. And again, the underhook, it's from here, a little bit more challenging, but it can still be problematic. I mean, for me, for me on top, for him on the bottom, this need, the way this becomes more effective for him, he starts turning his hip over. Yes, mm -hmm. that's, the, that's gonna, where it becomes an issue. So same thing, I feel this starting to like really get in deep, I block his leg and I move my hip out a little bit. Because the thing you wanna remember from here, his core movement, this is how you get out of this position. If I'm not blocking, for the person on the bottom, is to escape his hip enough to put his elbow and knee together. If his elbow and knee touch, even if I clear, I can't pass his guard anymore. I end up in his frame. It's the simple movement for escaping from the half guard on the bottom. You don't have to do a lot. You just have to connect the bottom knee and bottom elbow. And that's created by either Stevo moving his hip and creating space, or I move, see? But because I'm hooking this leg, 
As soon as, as soon as I see that and I'm here, I take my leg out and push his knees away. Then you extract your arm. Make sure you extract your arm right away. You don't want to get comfortable exactly with your arm in between your partner's legs. Very important. This, this, arm, this leg control is the big neutralizer when it comes to dealing with the underhook. This is anytime, anytime he wants to try to come up or come after me, it's like, you see, it's, you wanna, you're always paying attention to the space between his knees. If the wider that gap becomes, it's so easy. I can go to three quarter mount. Mount would be a little bit challenging, but three quarter mount's strong. Or I can peel my leg out. If this is not an option, you need the underhook back, you need to create distance. Right here, I just, I fight this through. And the thing you wanna remember, this is what's so powerful about this, even if he gets up, I can still drive him back down because I have the underhook. We get here with, he has a butterfly hook, another strong position. And if he has the underhook, his chances of sweeping me are very, very good. Because he starts engaging this and it's like I have to move back. But if he puts the hook in and I make a little space and put this in, now he can hook sweep me. Go ahead. The underhook always keeps you anchored to the top position. Or I should say it keeps him anchored to the bottom. It's like a hook. The key is you just have to be confident in it and understand how much power it really gives you. The importance of securing it from the top position. So you're working, this is great, this is great. They both work very, very well. Never feel like, well, I lost this, I'm out. No, maybe this is good, this keeps me in the game. And I, can, I don't mind giving him a little bit of distance because I understand that even if I get out here and he brings his elbows and knees in, I can always maintain control. 